Yes, it is as you have foreseen. It is the Intel RealSense depth camera D435. Search your feelings. You know them to be true. There be lasers inside. Hello, it's Jim from JetsonHacks.com. On today's show, we're looking at the Intel RealSense Depth Camera D435. Let's get started. Comes in this nice little black box here. Let's flip it over. Oh, hmm. The marketing blurbs. Up to 1280 by 720 active stereo depth resolution. Up to 1920 by 1080 RGB resolution. Depth diagonal field of view over 90 degrees. Dual global shutter sensors for up to 90 FPS depth streaming. Let's open up the box. Let's cut it open. Handy dandy razor cutter. Okay, so we have a nice little get started guide. Okay. Intel RealSense. This must be the camera. Oh, it's pretty small. Here's the front of the camera. Oh, it has a quarter 20 mount on it. That's nice. Let's see what's underneath here. Hmm. Oh, it has a nice little tripod. Boop, 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 boop. Let's see, let's screw it in here. Get in there, dog. Let's see, it needs to be like this. I guess we don't need this film anymore. We'll take the film off it. Ooh. And here is a USB cable. USB 3.1 C2 AM cable. USB C connector here, USB A connector there. Let's see, what else? Well, we're gonna figure out how to plug it in. Here's a little end cap here. And we plug our USB C connector in here. Lasering. Let's go hook it up to the Jetson and see what we see. Let's build the support software for the camera. On the Jetson Hacks account on GitHub, there is a repository named Build Live Real Sense 2TX. Let's clone that baby. Grab the address. Switch over to that repository's directory. There is a convenience script called install librealsense.sh, which will install the library, the demos, and the examples. It will also install the dependencies and some Jetson specific patches. As an added bonus, it sets up the UDEV rules so that the camera may be used in user space. Let's run that script. That slash install. Make sure that the camera is not plugged into the Jetson. Press any key. Alrighty then, the library is installed, the header files are present, and the demos and tools are located in slash user slash local slash bin. Let's clear this off 
Okay, let's plug the camera in. I'm using a powered USB hub. Switch over to slash user local bin. Let's run the RealSense viewer. Let's start up the RGB camera. There I am. We have some incomplete frames detected as it got started. It looks like they went away. The background there is a little bit glary. Let me see if I can adjust that. That's a little bit better. Not great, but it'll do. Okay, let's turn on our stereo module. Okay, so it goes into dog mode. And it slows down quite a bit. Let's take a look at the console. So there's a couple of things here. The first is that the frame metadata is in the UVC module. So we need to patch that if we want to get the frame information. And then another thing is that some of the pixel formats are not recognized. So we need to modify the V4L2 driver. On the Jetson, the V4L2 driver is built into the kernel image. So it's not quite as simple as just recompiling the V4L2 module. You have to rebuild the entire kernel itself. Another thing that I noticed during development is the way that the cores interact with the program itself. So in real viewer, let's open up a system monitor and we'll open up another terminal. So we're running in mode three right now. We'll see that the CPU is running 100%. So that's never a good sign in a GUI driven type of program. Let's turn the camera off. And it's still running 100%. So there's an issue here with the program itself. Let's go to a higher performance model on the Jetson. Let's just go M0. So we get slightly better performance. Let's reopen the system monitor. It gets confused when you switch the cores on it. We can see that one of the CPUs is still running 100%, and CPU 2 here is running 80%. So that sounds a little bit high. That's something to look at. So let's recompile the kernel now and add support for the different formats and the metadata. We will switch back over to the repository directory Normally what you'll want to do is build the kernel as part of your development process. I have kind of a quick and dirty build patched kernel. What this does basically is checks out the kernel sources, applies the configuration that we need to run the live real sense libraries, makes the kernel and then copies the image over. You can use this as a template. I wouldn't advise you to actually use this unless you have no intention of building a kernel on your own. You have been warned. So let's build the patched kernel. Close this baby up. This takes a while. Let's type in the password. Okay, the kernel has been built. The image has been placed in the boot directory and the modules have been installed. As I said before, you probably want to do this in a more developmental manner, which is 
build the kernel in the traditional manner. There are some scripts on the Justin Hacks account to help you do that. This is just kind of quick and dirty and it may or may not work. If you get to this point and you experience errors, then there are a couple of things that you can do. One of the things that this build script does is remove all the sources and all of the build objects. If we take a look at the options on the script, minus minus help. So we can see one of the options is no cleanup. And what this does is it builds everything, but does not remove the sources after the build. So you can go back and try to figure out what's wrong in the build. But I got to tell you, man, if you're that far along, you are in trouble. So anyway, we need to reboot to have the changes take effect. Kind of cross our fingers, hope it comes back. Ah, uh, we got lucky. It seems like we always get lucky in these videos. I wonder why. Okay, let's go back to our real sense viewer. A little bit of rearranging. Okay, we can see number one that we only have one unregistered media formatted at this point. Let's turn our camera on. And the camera works. We'll turn on our depth streams. So you can see that we're not getting any errors here because the timestamps are being provided through the patches. You might wonder what these dots are here in the infrared image. They are the laser projector. You can turn that off. So you can see that it is an infrared camera. You can see how much our depth map has degraded. In fact, there are two infrared cameras on here. That's how it does its stereo depth. Let me turn that on. Turn our emitter back on. And that's how we do depth. Our CPUs are still cranked. So my guess is there's some issue with it sleeping at the bottom of its GUI loop. And it's probably slow because it's doing CPU expansion of the uh, YUYV stream for the RGB color here. And probably some type of manipulation here on this color depth map. So I think this is kind of the end of part one. We kind of got the thing up and running. We're going to have to come back and revisit this to get it performance. One thing I haven't shown you is 3D. So let's turn that on. And you can see that it goes into real dog mode at that point. You only get like one or two frames a second, maybe. There can be a variety of reasons for this, but it's probably mostly because it's trying to rely on Intel CPU instructions to do the kind of mashing together of the point cloud. We'll have to go back and look and see if we can write some CUDA code to get that up and running in a proper manner. I don't think it's the fault of the camera or the you know, streams coming off the camera. I think it's on the actual device itself. Let's see if we can put a texture on here. <laughs> it's a total dog. <laughs> Go back to see if we can get back into 2D mode. No, it's ignoring us. Let's take a look at the point cloud example. So we can see that it's a little bit better. You might get three or four frames a second out of it, but it's not performing enough to be useful. 
And we happen to know that it can be a lot faster than this. We've seen it on other cameras. But it needs some TLC. We need to come back and add support for building the TX1 kernel. And then we will also have to come back and revisit making this thing more performant. But that's the end of part one. Thanks for watching.